In the recent updates, we've got some extra functionality inside Widget Blueprint. So in this video, I want to show you some of it and plus how you can add one widget into another and even keep functionality. So let's begin. Here, let's create our widget. For this, I will use user widget. So if you don't know difference between user widgets and model dialog variant, model dialog variant supports UI focus and user widget not. What means UI focus? It's basically when we can control something. So when we're playing with a character in the world, we can control character. So focus is in the world. So we're controlling aiming, shooting, all this kind of stuff. So all buttons and mouse clicking, it goes into world. Then when we're focusing in UI, it means we cannot control character, we cannot shoot, do anything in the world. We can only click anything in the UI. Because in above user widget and model dialog variant, we can have buttons. But only in this one, when you will display this and we're using this with pop-up dialog device, when you're triggering pop-up dialog device, straight away user is freezed and you will get mouse cursor and then you can control this UI. While user widget, it's primarily just for displaying some information. So for example, when you have like main hood on your screen and you're still controlling your player, but then you can see like, for example, like red versus blue uh, scores. And I choose this one on purpose. So we have our widget, let's add canvas. And in here, so we have now new tab and it's not so new. It's uh, like it was added few updates before, but we actually couldn't control these animations. But now actually we can control. I want that overlay and go to the side. Now with a size box, I can control size of the button and uh, I'm just using like overlay because I can add something else if I will need. Okay, so we have no button and we have animation tab. So let's create animation. Let's call it image transform. Maybe I will just move image from one location to another. So when this animation is selected, let's click on this one before actually adding. So we need that image. Right, so let's just drop it to the canvas and uh, I will anchor it in the center so it won't go anywhere. And maybe let's add something, yeah, like this weapon. You know what? Maybe what I will do instead of moving it, I will maybe make it visible and then scale it up. So image is selected, but it's not important. I can just select it in here, image 53. I have only one image, so renaming it's good practice if you have too many elements. But then when image is selected, I can click on a plus and I need visibility and I need transform. So in transform, we have scale, rotation, translation if we want. So it's pretty much the same as working with sequencer. So I will set it to visible at the beginning. So when I will start playing animation, it will straight away make it visible. And in here, when I have selected my image, I will set this visibility to hidden. We still will see it and we can work for this. But when we will start game, it actually will be invisible. So it means when we will start playing, it will become visible. Now, I will set this to zero, 0, by default, and I will key frame. Now, I will go to this 3, so this is in seconds, you can change to frames, and I will set to 1, 
and one. And now if I will place it, it goes like that. And it's actually sometimes your fan doesn't like when scale is set to zero. At least in the verse, it doesn't like. I'm not sure in the widget. Just to be safe, I will set it to really tiny number. Because anyways, we're starting with invisible and we're making it visible. And when we'll start scaling, so it doesn't matter. We don't need to keep it invisible all the time. So we have that and it's three seconds. So as you can see, if I will play like that, super simple. And now I will select my button, we'll go into bindings, add view model, actually on my second screen, like here, so view model, and we need this message view model. Don't need to select anything, just press select and close. Let's go back to binding. So we have this our loud button. So I'll click on that. And now if we will go into parameters of the loud button, got a few extra parameters and one of that it's on clicked. So before we had only click event. And now we have this on clicked. So what that means, if I will select that. And instead of choosing this hood message device, I can click on my WBP, so like my blueprint. And in here I have a bunch of parameters to play video. What we want is or this, or for example, this one. So this one, it plays forward. This one, it's actually we can choose. See, if I'm selecting this one, now I can choose in here play mode, forward, reverse or ping pong so ping pong it means it goes to the back and then it goes in reverse and again and again and again infinitely so we have that we have start time so we can even decide if we don't want to maybe from start from the beginning we can set what second you want to start speed and we need animation if you will click here we have no animation but actually you need to click on this so basically link and then click on that and in here we have name, image transform. This is my, that image transform animation called. So let's go back to bending. Click here on that and image transform select. So that's it. So basically what we're doing before, we had to do it a little bit differently. Let me quickly compile that. I will drop another button just to demonstrate how we had it previously. So let's say I have a button, I'm adding my binding, okay, so it's here on the top. Then in here I had to set it one way to view model, so basically it's from the widget into device. Now if I'm selecting this, you see we had conversation function. If I'm selecting that and we have now up to six buttons. So let's say this is my first button, okay, now in here. I had to select on this, then I don't have response, but in a pop-up dialog device, there is response. And then that adds another field. And in, in that field, you're basically choosing your button. And in that button, you're choosing on, uh, where is our button? And on the button, you're choosing click event. So basically, it means when player will press on that button, this click event will be sent to the device and from that device in the verse we can receive as well. So basically we have this chain. It's like from the widget into device, from device into verse. And in the verse we are receiving this event when we subscribe and we can get even like what button was pressed. But this thing it sends outside of the widget. Okay? That's a difference. But this one it actually keeps everything inside of the widget. So con of that is we can send event to, let's say, verse. So in the verse, if you want, for example, know that when player clicked on this button, you won't receive event because, again, we're not sending this event into the device. It stays inside of the widget. But if we just want to do something, so, for example, to display information or to play this animation, then it's totally fine. And there is no limit how many buttons you have and how many images, right? Because when we're sending to device, there's only six buttons limit. So this is kind of cool. So I will keep this 
When I will press play, it will scale and show our image. And let me recheck. Yes, everything works. I will just delete this button. Now the image is really tiny in there. And while I'm here, I want to show another thing. I will duplicate this image and I will anchor it on the top just so it's further away from the center. Like this, it's fine. And I will duplicate the button and I will offset it. Actually, maybe up so it will be visible that is to this icon. Okay, so I have now second button, and instead of controlling animation with the second button, I will control directly this image. And we can do this in the binding now as well. So when I have selected my second button, I'll click here. Again, I will choose on clicked. So here, on clicked. Now in here, I will choose my image. Yeah, it's just image. It's this one. And I will set visibility. And I will set visible. And by default, in here, you see it's hidden. And I will, if I will save, you see there is no errors. So everything works. And again, what it means, when I will press on this button, show star, it will send signal directly to this image that a hey, image you must show up that's it again there's device won't know about it this is going on directly in the widget okay so this is done but then hey as i said this widget it's not supporting focus in ui so it means player will never receive mouse and will never be able to click on these buttons so how I actually do it and i will close this and I will create another widget. And this will be our model dialog variant. So in here, let's add canvas. And then I have these buttons. So let's add buttons. So first of all, I need set size to content. Then in anchoring on full screen. And remove any offsets like that and now it looks exactly how it was looking in that widget and maybe by default i will set visibility to hidden actually and now in here again i will add some overlay maybe anchor to the corner yeah let's add size box and another button maybe quiet button Now with this show all, again, click on that, on click event, then we have uh, these buttons, visibility, set to visible, compile, fine. And then because again, we're not sending any event, you probably know that then it won't close our UI. I will duplicate all this thing because I want to put it on opposite side. So I will anchor it to the right corner. Okay, so now we have this button. 
and actually with this button selected let's add binding and in here actually before doing that let's click on one way and now function our button one now model dialog view model now in here response and in here we need to select our button it will be this button and click event and we've done so let's preview again our arrows that's everything more or less stays it looks like they're moving a lot it's just because they all have different anchors yeah so this button always will stay with this corner this button here this here this one is in the center and that so when our screen will change you see so they're all staying in the same positions but they ignoring each other so that's where like sometimes they can go on each other it all depends how you want to anchor that but it works so at the beginning we will see only show all nothing else we should see when we will click on show all we will see all these buttons not even these stars but just these two buttons when we will click on show star we'll see a star when play animation we'll see this animation and clicking on close we will close that so in here i will In here, I will drop this pop up dialog device. So, alignment, I will set it center it full. I don't want to auto display. Yeah, so everything else is pretty much fine. So, now in here, and before doing that, I will drop trigger in here. And now I need to go back to my widgets and main pop-up. So now select that and bring main pop-up into here. So now when to show, we trigger that. And we don't need to hide because when we will press close button, it will close automatically. And we've done. So let's test it out. And here we have our show all and our close. If I will close, it's gone. So if I will click on show all, I have now these buttons. And because I'm still in this pop-up dialog uh, window, I can now control these buttons, which I wouldn't be able in the hood message device. So if I will click show star, bam, I have my star. If I will click play animation, here we go, our animation. And if I will click close, I closed, and I can continue playing. As you can see, it, our widget UI is getting more and more powerful. So hopefully we'll soon we'll get like more control over the animations, not just only with button click, because yeah, it's not always so great. But eventually I think it will grow into fully working UI. So hopefully this will help you creating really awesome new styles for UI. I would like to say thank you to my all supporters. I appreciate your support. Thank you for your generosity. You can join our growing Discord community where we like to discuss UFN tips and tricks, showcase our work and help each other. You can find link in the description or in the channel header. You can get project files on my Patreon or just buy me a coffee to support me. If you are interested in learning more about UFN materials, coding, widget UI and more, feel free to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications when new videos will be released. See you soon.